Hey guys, how are you? I hope you had a good week and I hope you liked last week's assignment. This week um, we're getting a little bit closer to Thanksgiving and I thought it would be kind of fun if we um, did a drawing of some Indian corn. So I'm going to put up a couple samples of Indian corn so that you guys can see um, what it looks like. Some of you might know, but some of you might not. So I'm going to put up a couple samples of photos that I took of different types of Indian corn and then we'll get started on our, our drawings, okay? Um, for this assignment, you're gonna need your paper, of course, um, pencil, eraser, Sharpie, and watercolor. Oh, and um, get either a white crayon or a white um, oil pastel, because we're gonna do a little bit of um, watercolor resist. Um, and I'll talk to you about that later, okay? But go get your supplies and come back and we'll get started, okay? Thanks. Okay guys, so let's get started on our corn. Um, the first thing that we're gonna do is draw sort of a oval. Like this. Okay, so it's kind of a skinny oval with rounded edges. Um, if you are up for a little bit more of a challenge, you can also throw in a second one up here. Kind of like that. Maybe it goes behind the first one. Or you could even, if you are really ambitious, you could do a third one over like this. I'm going to just sketch this out for you so that you can see that. But I'm actually not going to draw all three in my sample. Um, I do have a sample that I'll show you later that does have all three. Okay, so this is our basic ear of corn. What we're going to do up here is we're going to chop this off right here. And same on these two if you did more than one. Just kind of round off the top like that. It really is a little bit more flat on the top. Okay, so like that. And again, remember not to draw too hard. Don't draw too heavy with your pencils, especially because this is just our sketching stage. And all of these pencil marks eventually are going to be erased. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a line down the middle of our ear of corn. Then we're going to do a slightly curved line that ends in the same spot down here. So up at the top, it's about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch apart from the line before it, but it curves down and reaches this same end point at the bottom. Like that. Okay, so there's my, my ear of corn. Again, if you guys want to do these other two, that's fine, but I'm just going to show the one for now. Then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw lines the other way. Now remember that this thing is curved, so our lines are going to be curved. And we're going to draw like that all the way down. Those of you that are choosing to do more than one, this might take a little while. It'll look really good when you're done, but it might take a little while. So it's perfectly okay for you to, well, as long as your mom says it's okay. It's it's perfectly okay for you guys to take a little break, shake your hands out um, when you get tired and come back to it later. I was drawing my own earlier, and I'll show that to you in a little bit, that has the three. And um, it is a little bit more ambitious. There. 
okay? And then up here, we have the, um, it's the part that used to be over top of the corn when it was growing. It used to be green and then you peel it back, but now it's older and dried out. So it's kind of like that. Kind of like that. Okay guys, so there's our corn and our corn husk up here. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our Sharpie. Now I'm actually using a Micron pen, um, but your Sharpie is perfectly fine. Um, if you have a Micron pen and you want to use it, you may use that. But um, basically I'm going to go to these little, um, these little squares that I've made and I'm going to kind of fill them in now. And I'm going to use kind of a rounded oval. And I'm going to make sure that I hit all of the sides that I've drawn with my pencil. Okay. Like that. Okay, or it's kind of like a little rounded square. So I'm going to fill in all of these shapes. And now this part can get a little bit tedious, guys. Um, your hands might get a little bit tired. If they do, just pause for a minute, shake out your your wrist, go get a drink of water or something, and come back down. It's really simple, but just there's a lot of little pieces of corn to draw. You know, when you get to these bigger pieces, it's gonna be kind of like that. Okay, and just finish all the way down. When you get towards the bottom, it's gonna get really small, and you can just make some tiny little circles. I don't know that you're gonna be able to actually fit them in inside of your lines or not, but maybe just each time you do a little tiny row of circles, maybe you do one less circle. This here is my sample drawing that I've been working on as well. It's a little bit more finished than the one that I'm working on with you guys. So if you wanna pause it right here and use this as a sample as you do your work, um, that would be great. Okay guys, so here is my corn. Now again, some of you might just have the one and that's perfectly okay. Three is actually quite a bit much, but it'll look really cool if you do take the time to do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and um, do my um, corn husk up at the top. Now, if you're just doing the one, you're gonna start here, you're gonna curve out and go back in. Same over here, out and go back in and then just kind of bring your leaves up like that. Now I'm actually gonna do these as well. So I'm gonna do a second one over here, like that. This one here is gonna go out and then in. And we have this little bow. Now you don't have to do a bow. Um, you could just have a, a line like a rubber band. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bow. So I'm gonna do two little loops And two loops here. And then just like a little bit of ribbon. Okay, again, if that's too tricky, just do like a little tiny curved line right here, like a little smile. Okay, and that's perfectly fine. But we want them to be gathered so that we can hang them up, okay, as a decoration. Okay, and then this is made up, each one of these is made up of a bunch of different leaves. So I'm just gonna put a couple of extra lines in here. So that it looks like it's extra leaves. So when it's all finished, it should look something like that. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and erase all of our pencil lines. Okay, I already erased the ones on my corn but I haven't done these up here. So go ahead and get your eraser and let's erase all of our pencil marks. Now do be careful, make sure that you don't wrinkle your page and don't go crazy with your eraser. Don't be like blah, 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 all over the place, okay? Just look at where your lines are and erase your lines. Make sure that you hold your paper carefully so that you don't crinkle it. Go ahead and get your crayon 
and your supplies for your watercolor. So that means your watercolor paint, your brushes, a cup of water, and a paper towel. And then we'll start the next step. Okay guys, so our next step is that we're going to take our white crayon or our white oil pastel and we're going to just put a little dot in each of these little kernels of corn. And because this is waxy, when we go over it with our watercolor, the watercolor won't get to where we put our little dot. Don't make it too big, just a tiny little dot. And that way, we'll have a little highlight on all of our little pieces of corn when we do go ahead and put our watercolor in. I'm just gonna do this one. I'm not gonna do all three with you guys. Um, but if you do have the second or the third ear, um, feel free to stop and pause this to get them all done. Ooh, you guys got a greeting from my kitten. That was Mr. Ron. He wants to go outside and play. But I don't let him do that because it's not safe for him. Okay, so now that I've got that down, you know what, actually, I might do a couple little strokes up in here too. Maybe just some, some kind of curved lines, just a couple, and maybe that'll make a nice highlight when we go over that. We're gonna start with our paints. Now guys, here's my paint palette. I've got all these different colors. Um, the corn that we're doing can really be almost any color that you want. The corn that we buy at the store is yellow, and that's really just because someone somewhere decided that they liked yellow corn. Before we started making it yellow and marketing only yellow corn, corn came in all different kinds of colors. And you can even now find corn um, in you know red, blue, yellow, green, um, there's actually a type of corn that I grow in my yard. It's called glass gem corn. You guys can look that up if you want. Glass gem, and it's beautiful. It literally comes in every color of the rainbow. Um, so I'll show you guys some pictures of that too. But anyway, pick out whatever colors you want. You can use as many or as few as you want. And we're just going to paint in these little kernels. Okay? You don't have to put a lot of paint or a lot of water. It kind of depends on the look that you're going for. Okay, and just so we remember, we're taking our water from our cup and swishing it around in our paints to get our paints nice and wet. And then we're gonna come over here. If our brush is too wet, we can always dab it on our paper towel, okay? Because we don't want it to be like soupy. Oh, we have another visitor. Look at that, would you? You know what, some of the corn that I have even has been blue. So I'm gonna get this nice and mixed in. Again, that might be a little bit too much on my brush, so I'm gonna dab some off. I'm gonna dab some off. I'll come over here. If 
your color goes on and you think it's too dark, you can always rinse your brush off and then just add some water. I'm doing that right now. So I just rinsed my brush. And now I'm gonna come over and take some of this paint off if I think it's a little bit too dark. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys pause this again and we're just gonna go over every single one of those kernels of corn. You can pick out your favorite colors or you can look at different samples of corn and make it look however you want. Make it look so that you would wanna hang it up as decoration or maybe even eat it or something, okay? So color in each one of these little things and then come back and we'll finish the rest of it, okay? Okay guys, so this is what I have at the moment. Now I'm going in and filling in these little spaces between the corn kernels with, I don't know, I'm using a brown color. You could use any color in the world that you want. Or if you really don't feel like dealing with it, you could just leave them, leave them blank the way that they were. But I want to go in and just do this little extra bit. Um, another thing that you could do, try to do some um, shading. So for example, let's see, I'm going to get some water, put in my purple here. We can kind of go around the edges and make it just a little bit darker. That one's a little bit better. A little bit darker around the edges. Now I could certainly go in and make the edges of my blues darker, but blue is a good shadow color altogether. So maybe, maybe I wanna mix my colors a little bit. Maybe I wanna put some blue over top of my purples, like just in a couple spots. You know, maybe I just want to go around the edges like that. If it's too hard of a line, maybe I, I want to blend it a little bit so I can wash my brush off. And so this is a, a wet brush with nothing, or it's a damp brush without any color on it. And I can go in and sort of blend these colors a little bit. These are not things that you have to do, but they're things that you could do. My reds were, I don't know, they they were kind of pinkish red and they didn't get really as dark as I was hoping. I was hoping for something a little bit more burgundy kind of. So I could go in with a little bit, bit of black even if I wanted to and kind of go like that around the edges and then rinse my brush off and blot it on my paper towel. And I could go in and kind of darken it up a little bit. If that's too dark, I can go back in. Well, first of all, I could use a paper towel to lift some of that off if I wanted to. But I could also go back in with some of my red over top of it like that. But you could use a little bit of brown around here. And then rinse off your brush. Blot it on your paper towel and come back in with something like that, just to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. But again, that's really only if you want to take the extra step to make it look a little bit more realistic, but you absolutely don't have to do this. I'm just showing you in case you want to. I'm gonna do one more. On my yellows, I could take like a, a golden yellow ochre and do something kind of like that. Okay, that just gives it a little bit more dimension. But again, it's totally up to you. It's your painting, so I want it to look how you want it to look. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna get a bigger brush. This is like a three quarter inch brush. It doesn't have to be that big. Um, 
And if you don't have a bigger brush at all, that's perfectly fine as well. But I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take like this color here. I'm gonna put a little bit more water in it because I don't want it to be too dark. I kind of want a light version of that color. So I'm gonna put my brush in my paint. I'm gonna dab it off just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come over here and do this corn cob. Okay. Now I'm gonna go over my bow simply because, well, it's gonna be hard to not go over it, but also I can come back in when that's dry and fill in my bow with more color. Okay. I wanna have some streaks in here. So after I put my first layer in, I'm gonna go in with different darknesses, different values. So that's the same color. Just one of them is more watered down than the other. And now maybe I wanna get a little bit of this here brown, just for like a couple spots. Something like that. And now we're going to watercolor our background. You can pick a color, any color in the world that you want to use. For some reason, I'm really drawn to this color right here. Um, I think for me, it's just because it's a perfect fall color. And I don't know about you guys, but my leaves are almost all gone from my trees. And I'm a little bit sad about it. <laughs> so I want to use a little bit of a fall color. So I'm gonna just go in and brush this into my background. I do want it to be wet. I don't want it to be too dry. If you can see like individual brush strokes or like pieces of hair um, from your brush, when you paint your paper, that means that it's too dry and you need to add some more water into it. There we go. And you know what? You could even use more than one color if you wanted to. Or maybe you want to make it a little bit darker in some spots. shadow underneath of our corn here. Get some brown. I think I am going to do that. We'll put a little bit of a shadow underneath here. And maybe underneath this one. This one here, I don't know if we would actually see a shadow or not, but we could just do a little tiny bit. So it looks like that. I think that might be it guys. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish my other two cobs of corn and I'll show you a picture of it when I'm all finished, okay? But if you just did the one, then that is perfect just like that, okay? Hey guys, so I hope that you liked your assignment. I can't wait to see them. Please um, have your parents text them to me so I can see how you did and I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you're enjoying these last couple days of fall um, before it gets really cold and wintry. 
You guys take care and I will see you next week. Okay. Bye.